Hey everyone, you're in the hub, you're with Matthew and Angelique. And we are, she unfortunately is an expert in pain, in neurogenic mm -hmm. pain, and maybe pain that's coming from the subtle body because of the burst fracture you had at L2. Yes. And there's some sort of stuff. And so, and as, as being with Angelique for a couple years now, or more than that, watching when she gets waves of pain <clears throat> and where it triggers from. And what I just was, you just were telling me um, about a Tai Chi class you were taking and how it triggered stuff. So you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, so we were doing all of this warming up and building, like building heat. And I used to be, you know, I used to do a lot of vinyasa and I just loved like the fiery stuff. And so I was like, oh, good, building heat. But it just kept firing up my legs and I, and I know I've had that experience in other things where people want to bring energy into my legs. And I've, I've had that with um, acupuncture and different modalities. Have you had acupuncture that triggers the pain? Yep. Oh, Anything that brings energy. So any like going Working in the meridians to just bring like energy. Cause, or anything where people want to like, like we, you know, I found this thing and I think it can help you. It will bring uh, blood back in and help you walk or whatever it is. And I found that a lot of that stuff just activates pain <laughs> for me. And I'm like, it's about calm. <laughs> for me, not, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, it's about like. So that makes sense. In another segment, calm. you're talking about finding that place that where you're not going to poke the bear is what we talked about right. before, where you're kind of holding static at a certain level. Yeah. Because if too much energy comes through the system, Right, mm -hmm. you don't have the conduits right for it to come through, like, right? And so, the too much energy comes through, and over, then yeah, just, just over that's so interesting because everyone thinks, Oh, more energy, more energy. Mm -hmm. I wonder in our working together if there would be a way to figure out um, how to modulate that or how to balance that. So, because I totally get why more energy would be more stirring, right? Mm -hmm. and, and yet. You don't want to just live emptiness in your legs, you know, like have it. But what I want to get across to you at home is that, and I see this a lot in a whole bunch of different people that are carrying pain, creating static emptiness is a pain management strategy, right? For and sure. It, and and you're saying for sure. Why don't you say more about your take on that? Um, well, I've done both. I mean, it's... <sighs> And the, the staticness can lead to uh, loss of uh, muscle tone and depression and uh, alienation and a whole bunch of stuff that isn't, isn't productive for like me as a human being. I can speak for myself. <clears throat> and something I've had to learn when working with you is like how far to go and then when to pull back. And even just in general, like how far to go and when to pull back because I'm not capable of doing what I used to be able to do. And so it's really about like noticing what my limits are. And sometimes I go over a little bit and then I just have to lay low for the rest of the day. Do you mean you're not able to do as much you used to do since you've been injured? Since I've been injured, right. yeah. Right, okay, I wanted to make sure Sorry, we clarified yeah. that. That you're laying after you do less or else you trigger too much pain. Trigger too much pain or hurt myself, injure myself. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I've, it's taken me a while um, to get to the point where I can be, take your class and feel like I'm working hard and then be able to say, I think it's time for me to, <laughs> like either mm -hmm. legs up the wall or just, you know, do it without pushing so hard. So in our dynamic, like when you're coming to my class, and she comes to my traditional class on Thursday morning, so she's in that, you know, mostly able-bodied or traditional students. Um, what was it that gave you the confidence to know when to stop? Or, or was it anything about the pressure of how I taught you? Or was it more just you recognizing the boundary or limits yourself? I think you told me that. Because like, you and I were kind of exploring what would help the pain. 
And so I was giving you reports back, like, oh, this is how I'm feeling, this is how I'm feeling. And, uh, and so there was just, I think you had just said, like, you need to tell, you, you're going to need to back off when you, mm -hmm. when you're, you know. So that and that's of sort of like a no, it's hard, weird it goes concept for me. <laughs> yeah, she's a, she drives hard. I mean, there's a reason why she was doing the type of yoga she did before her injury, you know, and that she's doing aerial stuff. I mean, all that stuff is because of who you are, mm -hmm. right? And so that's one of the things you have to figure out as a teacher is how to, how to support somebody. Because if you don't work hard, you also, part of you, go, you go as crazy. Right. Right? So there's a balance mm -hmm. between that. But I do, you know, this idea of like creating emptiness or hollowness in order to pain manage in the short term, right? Like everyone at home does that too. I mean, if you think of the last time you had a fever and you look at someone's a fever, they often raise their shoulders up towards their ears. So everyone at home right now, just raise your shoulders up towards your ears and feel what that does. It creates a hollowing here. Mm -hmm. That often is part of like, like when you have a fever, you have the chills, mm -hmm. you go and you start going like this. There's, and that's one of the ways you deal with what's, what's systemically happening. And so this idea of creating empty space or hollows, I want to get across, is something we're already doing a lot. We all have this kind of intuitive pain management that gets smaller and more empty in response to pain. The thing about it is that it needs to only be a short-term strategy. But the other thing I like about your story, and I want you to say more about this, why do you think, I like also for Angelique that the converse has been true, is that someone that wants, oh, we need to get more energy or more prana through your body, and somehow it'll make you better. Right. Like, or make you walk again, or deal with pain. In fact, that's got a negative effect, too. Yeah. How, do you, how have you dealt with that? Have you just, can you just tell when you don't want to do it, or, or what? Yeah, now I, can, now I can tell by the way people talk to me. Now Say I know. more about that. As soon as somebody, like, it just, you can just tell by the, by the conversation. Like, as soon as somebody says um, something about uh, bringing in blood, bringing in energy, I'm like, listen, <laughs> we're going to need to have a conversation here. I don't want any energy in my legs. Like, I know, I feel like as somebody who's, like, I'm by no means an anatomy expert, but um, you know, I've studied a little bit of anatomy, and and I know my own body, and I think all of us know our own bodies the best. If you just give yourself a moment to just take your space, you will realize that you know your own body better than anybody. And that, and when I realized that, I was finally able to be like, just to tell every, you know, tell people like, you're gonna need to. Back off of me. Because everyone's got their latest thing because everyone's inspired <laughs> right. by what they're doing. Yeah, and everybody wants to save everybody. Yeah, totally, everybody wants yeah. to fix, especially when you have a great idea. I mean, I certainly had plenty of great ideas in my day, but now I realize, like, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, well, and you might. And, and, and I might. And I mean, that, I that the more, you know, more energy isn't always the solution. But now as a yoga teacher, I'm sitting here thinking... Because I never knew this exactly, that in a way you don't want more energy in your legs. I kind of knew, but now I like you're saying it. That's going to affect how I think about teaching it. So that means that for me, as a yoga teacher, because I do want you to have, I believe that part of what helps pain management is boundary. Yes. Right? So there's a, so I know that I don't want, I maybe don't want you pushing in it, trying to move through your legs as much as I thought I might want to, but I still want to figure out how you get the boundary, mm -hmm. the container for the movement of the energy. Right. And I don't have to try to get you to extend through your legs as much if that extension is coming right through L2 or right through that mm -hmm. switchboard. So this is interesting. It's going to move us into the more yogic part of this, and, and that's what we're going in the hub real soon. Hey, I'm back. If you liked what you saw, there's more coming. To keep up with new releases, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on your notifications.